Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. We've had another busy week and made some major improvements. We start, So I'll start off here out on Ignea where all the vulcanite comes from. And you've, you've seen this planet a few times before but there's always more going on here. So I think I'm going I'm to start off here and talk about what's happened. So the biggest thing as I've done, as you can see by the stuff that I'm flying over, is that I've massively increased the supply of vulcanite that's, being, that's coming through here. So as before, we've got the trains going over to all of the core mines, dropping off the uh, the vulcanite core chunks here, where they're being put into the warehouses and then fed out along here, as, as, as has been happening for ages. But the big difference is that I've doubled the number of um, the crushers along here, and I've also gone through and moduled everything properly. So now you'll notice that all of these... Um, all these pulverizers have got a full of tier 3 productivity modules and that means we've now bumped the amount of stuff we're getting out of them for up by um, where it's up by 32% so we're getting almost an extra third out of these machines just because of the uh, because of the productivity modules now those productivity modules will play absolute havoc with the speed because whilst they give us an extra 8% productivity each they also knock 20% off the speed so having four of them there would bring the speed down to um, minus down to 20% of what it would normally be at so to compensate for that, I put in these beacons in between them as well. And each of these beacons, as you can see, is affecting the six machines around it. And this, these are space exploration beacons. And that means that you can only have one beacon per building. Uh, otherwise, you get what the game calls beacon overload. So if I put another one of them in over here, for example, like that, um, we'll wait for the bots to bring it over. But you'll see what happens. Essentially, this means, but this means that this, the modules in this, in this, uh, in this beacon are affecting the uh, machines that it, that it's in it within its range. Now they're only affecting it. 50% efficiency. So there we go, they brought one out now. So now as you can see, this, this beacon is now affecting these two machines, and so they've got beacon overload. And that means that they just don't work at all. They're, they're, they're completely frozen. But if I take this bit, this extra beacon out again, then the system will start to work again. So we've got rid of the beacon overload. So yes, I've put in the speed modules in here. Now each of these would give a boost of 30% um, speed. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So in th so you think that would give a 240% speed boost. But no, unfortunately the, um, the, the, the beacons only have a 50% effectiveness of their of the modules you put in them otherwise they'd be a bit too powerful i suppose so that means that we get 50 percent of the effect of these modules being pushed out to these machines which is why we've got them now running at plus 40 percent speed so it's they, they were pulled down to 20 percent by the uh, by the modules inside them but then having the uh, an extra plus 120 percent speed brings them up to 140 or plus 40 over, over the normal one so yes they're they're working slightly faster than norm than they would normally in inverted commas um, and they're also producing a third extra over what they wouldn't produce normally so the, that's that's this is the power of modules and I think I might have talked about this before but it's worth mentioning again that the reason that we norm a lot of the time for, for machines I say it's not really worth putting speed modules in you might as well just put more machines down um, but when you when you start to put in uh, productivity modules into the machines, these productivity modules are quite expensive. If we have a look in FNEI, you'll see that to make a prod three module costs okay 25 circuits. That's not too bad. Uh, 50 vulcanite block. That's quite a lot. Um, and two and two productivity twos. If we have a look at those, that's two productivity ones and some other stuff, which is also some other stuff in here. So you're looking at taking four productivity module ones to make productivity module three, plus all of the other stuff that goes into them. So we look so that'd be immediately be sort of fifty so sixty electronic circuits plus another twenty, so eighty electronic circuits and some and thirty red ones and all and all that solver and so on and so on all the way up the stack. And, and you eventually get to the as you get to the even even higher tier modules it gets more and more ridiculously expensive. And so that's why it's quite important to minimise the number of modules you're using, and therefore it's worth using this beacon here. Because if I wanted to have, if I if I wanted to have these machines running as fast as they are, I'd need to have seven times as many of them uh, if I wasn't using the speed modules. And that would mean each, so seven times as many. Seven times six is forty-two, and each of those takes four modules. So that's about 160, 168 of these of these productivity modules. Or alternatively, I could have I could just have the eight in here, and they and these are a lower tier, so it's much much cheaper. Um, so yes, that's why we, that's why we use beacons with um, with with these machines. Now and then, in order to get that boosted up a little bit further, I've got a second set of them over here. And as you can see by this big gap on the belt over here, we did briefly run out of um, core chunks that were being unloaded from the trains over here. In fact, the trains the the train has gone off to go and get some more, and we're about to run out again. So that's going to again have another break in it. So I do need to go out, possibly put in more trains, possibly put in certainly put in more core mines, uh, just in order to try and keep the whole system running absolutely flat out. 
That's then fed down into these machines down here. The, now, this, this, this is basically the same as it was before. But again, I've gone through and I've pumped them all full of productivity modules. So here in this crushing step, we have another boost of 32%. We've got Again, we've got the same logic with the with the beacons around them to get that extra oomph, ex, get the extra speed out of them, even though they're, um, and, and to keep them, keep them going, even though they're, even though they have the speed reduced by the productivity modules. So there's another 32% of uh, productivity coming from these. Now, ideally, I'd have had these pulverizers across the top of here, so we could use the same beacons for, the, for, for all of them. Um, but I didn't really design the system quite well enough, and there wasn't space to do it. So it's a little bit of a waste of electricity. It's a little bit of a waste of um, speed modules, but I'm only using the speed twos in here, and they're relatively cheap, so I don't care quite as much. And then down here, I've done a re redesign as well. Basically, I've, I've, I've created this gap down the middle here to allow me to put the uh, the beacons in to to, um, to speed up all of these uh, all of these centrifuges. Now. It's not perfect because it, once again we've, we've not, I'm not I'm not able to put anything on the other side because there's so much stuff going on here that just isn't room to put another to put there's so much so many belts required above and below these um, these centrifuges that there simply wasn't room to to, uh, to put another row of them in there so I've not done that which is a little bit of a shame but yeah, I, I I I think we can cope with it. And then down here with the uh, with the furnaces, once again a row of um, modules, a row of beacons along the middle to keep them up at speed. And these have got um, a plus. These have got a plus 40% boost because you can get five modules in these. These are uh, the uh, the industrial furnaces have loads and loads of module slots. So you can get five in there, only t but only two in the um, in the centrifuges here. So we've got 32% here, 32% here. Uh, 16% here and 40% here and if we add all of those up I'm going to do that after I finish recording this video and put the number on screen here you can see why I wanted to put these modules in because that's giving us a lot more vulcanite for the same amount of input than we were getting before that said I still wasn't happy with that I still wanted more so over here I've now finally as you saw in the last step in the last video I finally got the uh, the mine over here up and running properly. So that's now chucking out vulcanite ore into the into the station here where it gets picked up by the train. We've got a nice supply of 38,000 in here. So this can be taken away as fast as we want it to. The trains will bring it up over to over to here and unload it into the station. We can then pass it down the belts over here. And then down here we've got essentially it's the same process again. So this is this is basically a direct copy and paste of the systems over here, except that we don't need to crush the core fragments down. So it's only the only the steps after that. So we're taking in the vulcanite, we're turn, we're pulverizing that down into um, into crushed vulcanite and a little bit of the enriched stuff. Which is again as before going into the warehouse here and then being fed around the rest of the system. Now the next thing to talk about here is why some of these lanes aren't running and why I've got some prioritization running over here. So, one thing I noticed was when this whole system was set up and running, I noticed that um, the machines up here were, were deadlocking. There was, there were, the, the rest of the system down here wasn't running fast enough in order to deal with all of the crushed vulcanite, sorry, all of the vulcanite ore that was coming out of the pulverizers up here. I think we were then able to pulverize it down here, but then this stage wasn't able to deal with it all. So what I've done in order to improve that a little bit is I've set up some cunning prioritization systems. So along here we've got this this belt being fed, this belt coming in here and, and being in, and out here being fed straight through. So this one never stops. This one will go into here until we hit um, 15,000, and the rest of the system down here is capable of running through all of the products as fast as it, as fast as this 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 bank is capable of producing the uh, the, the crushed vulcanite. However, it's not capable of running through it at twice that speed. So sometimes this machine, these machines here aren't fully needed. And you can see that this belt is running relatively slowly. And that's because over here, we've told these ones to only run when there's less than 10,000. So the, the, the vulcanite coming off these belts will be used first. Then if there's any shortage of that, then we'll pull it in from this belt as well. So, in order to make sure that I'm, uh, and so that was what was run, running beforehand, um, except without the prioritization. Essentially, the, the warehouse here was filling up, and then both these belts were running slowly. And I thought, okay, but I want to be using all of the core chunks all of the time because they're the things that are basically free. They're produced at a steady rate over time, versus as fast as I want, but from a limited puddle. So I want this one, these these machines running absolutely all the time. And so over here. I've got these um, these belts doing some prioritization. That's feeding it down here by priority, so we've always got plenty to run this system down here. But if there's ever any overflow, which there is quite a lot of, as you can see here, the overflow will then flow down here and go into the systems over here, where we've then got, once again, we've got the same sort of thing. So again, we're feeding it onto the belts here and passing it in to be used by uh, these pulverizers. And then, again, down here, we're prioritizing the inputs from those. So if it's less than 15,000, we'll pump it in there. If there's less than 10,000, we'll pump it in there. And this is 
kind of working, except we seem to have a bit of we seem to still actually have a backlog here, which is quite impressive. Um, this this belt here isn't running in solidly as I would expect it to be. So let's have a quick look and try and work out why not. It looks like yes, here we go. There's not enough um, there's not enough vul crushed vulcanite being fed along the top of here to go down to keep these machines satisfied. So I'm I think over. Presumably that means over here I've got, yes, over here I've got two belts feeding out and going along this way. But due to obviously not copying it properly and having this belt in the wrong place and having all of this a little bit too high up, I've only got one belt coming out here. So perhaps I should upgrade this to a blue belt so we can have it flow out a bit faster. Or find another way to spaghetti another belt out from here, bring it along here and then start topping up the... Um, the vulcanite supply along here because as you can see the crushed vulcanite isn't getting all the way along so some of these machines down at the end here aren't running the um, the next step where they take the crushed vulcanite and turn it into the enriched vulcanite and that means there's not as much of it on this belt down here so presumably we're not getting as much being done down here we're not because there, there should be this belt should be more than full and it's not because we're uh, we're not producing enough of it whereas over here you'll see that this belt is basically it's not always full actually but it's significantly fuller to the extent that at one point I had to put in an overspill belt here to bring the um, bring the the pure the enriched vulcanite through when there wasn't enough room on the belt so yes the system over here is running a little bit too slowly because we're not bringing enough crush through and it can't quite keep and it can't uh, so it can't quite keep up with the inputs that I'm trying to feed into it and that's why we've got this sort of backlog going along here and that means some of these machines aren't working which is then therefore reducing the amount of throughput I get on the uh, from from the uh, crushed over here, from the uh, from the chalk core chunks I'm bringing in over there. Now I do notice that some of these are still flowing a little bit despite the problem that I mentioned. So I think I need to put in some belt side balances along here like this. Uh, and same on the other side. And that, putting those in there like that will ensure that both sides of the belt get used along here. Okay, there's a brief pause while it tries to tidy it up and sort it out. But eventually we'll have both sides of the belt being used along here, so we will pull it through as fast as we can. And this problem happens because the inserters down here are lazy, so they will always take from the near side of the belt if they can. And they'll only take from the far side of the belt if the near side runs out. It also looks like I possibly don't have quite enough pulverizer machines along here to keep up with the... Uh, demand although I think that's because some of them have stopped because there's a bit of a, uh, a back pressure coming from this this warehouse here that's, that's a bit uh, that's a little bit over full so we'll have to we'll have to come over and take a bit of a look at that and uh, and work out why this is jamming up and having some issues and get it sorted out doing all of that has now meant that I've significantly increased the flow of vulcanite that's coming through here so looking at this well we're still not building up any in this in this warehouse here because despite having probably quadrupled the rate I'm producing the uh, the vulcanite at, Norvis is still hungry for more, 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 more vulcanite. It's never satisfied. But let's have a look at the production graph, because this does show off how things have been going. If we have a look at the vulcanite specifically, over the last 10 hours, because that'll take us... No, no 10, 10 hours, there we go. That'll take us back to the uh, previous stream. So this is this is where I started working on all of this. Um, as you can see, we've had a, little bit, a few little blips here and there. Basically, we've gone from about 238 vulcanite blocks per minute up to 1.8 thousand. So it's actually significantly more than quadrupled. It's, this is this has gone up by a lot. Oh yes, because this has gone up, yeah, quadrupled to an extent because I doubled the amount of vulcanite being produced because I used to have just this lot pulverizing the core front ch chunks. Then I put in this one, uh, so that doubled it, and that meant I needed to put these in to uh, to, to keep up as well. And then I put in another copy of all of this over here. So it is in fact theoretically quadrupled. Uh, plus, I then put in all of those uh, modules that we talked about earlier. So the amount I can produce has gone up enormously since then. So there's a massive, massive, massive increase on the amount of vulcanite that we can produce. Um, so, so yeah, that, that explains why when we look over here, we're seeing that jump from uh, about 200, 200 whatever to 1800. So it's gone up by about almost nine, potentially close to nine times. So I feel, feel that's been an immense improvement on the amount we're, we're producing. What you will notice, however, is that the amount of vulcanite we've used in that time has gone up from being down here at the, sort of the 200 and whatever that we were making. Now we're using most of it, at least some of the time, we're using virtually all of it. It's up to 3.4 thousand per, per minute being used. But it's the, but there are these drops in there, though. So the, the total overall, um, actually, those total numbers are very, very similar, 300, about 340,000 either side. 
Um, oh, and that's because these spikes are going up much higher. So you can see that we're actually we're still using almost as much, we're still using basically all of the vulcanite that we're producing, which is quite impressive. If we now have a look at pyroflux, which is one of the big things that we've been using the vulcanite for, so if we have a look at that, you can see that the rate of production was was high, was high, was high, was high, and then it now has dropped off down to 2.8 thousand per minute, and that's probably because that's about all we were needing at the time. We filled up, so we probably filled up the buffers. That said, we are still using uh, 7,600 per minute because there's a lot of um, a lot of pyroflux-based smelting happening on Norvis at the moment. Uh, but if we look at the totals, we've made 3.8 million and used 2.7 million, so we have got nicely ahead of where we, of what of what we required. So also, I think this one's going to spike up and down as the trains come in and grab a train load and take it off to a smeltery. This is probably going to be able to stay fairly static, and the average of this is going to easily easily deal with that. So the point my, my the point of what I'm trying to say here is that the amount of pyroflux we're using, which is the main sink for vulcanite, has dropped off dramatically. Let's have a bit of a look on Norvis, and I know this is sort of getting a bit ahead of myself because I don't normally look at um, Norv Norvis until later on in the video. <clears throat> but if we look over here, we can see this is where the uh, the vulcanite is being dropped in, and at the moment we've got we've got these belts that are only feeding out when there's less than 175 uh, pyroflux available, and we've got to more than 175 stored in these in these tanks down here. So we now have lots of pyroflux. That's why we stopped making it. The train can run several times over, like three, almost four times over, before we'll drain these tanks. So that's great. So that means all the power, all the vulcanite that's being shipped over is now being shipped out down these belts, through here, and is being put into these trains. Um, now this train is significantly less full than it was the previous time I looked at it. So I think that means this train has probably been off to Module City over here, and unloaded fairly recently up here. And then, there you go. yes, you can see it has. And all this vulcanite is now disappearing down here to be made into those tier 3 modules that I was using for improving the vulcanite system. So, we've, in a way, we've, we've spent lots and lots of vulcanite in order to allow us to make more vulcanite. But I think those modules will pay for themselves relatively quickly in the increase in the amount of vulcanite we're, we're able to then... Uh, the, the increased vulcanite we're able to produce will more than pay for the amount of vulcanite we spent on making those modules. And that's going to then allow us to use, start using the modules in larger quantities, going off and using them for other things as well. Uh, so yes, that's going to be a major, major thing in the future. And if we have a look through here, we can see what we can have a look and see what else we're currently short of. Uh, we're using clearly using the blue circuits, but the supply seems to be okay. Again, using the red circuits, I can see them flowing, and and the sulfur. So all these things are getting used up, but we're not having any supply problems because there's lots and lots in the warehouses along here. So it looks like Module City's inputs are basically satisfied, with the exception of the vulcanite that's getting used up as fast as it comes in. Uh, but we are now making a nice healthy quantity of all of these um, all of these uh, modules. You can see down here all that vulcanite that's pouring through is going through to make these tiny little smattering of green of Earth tier three modules, of which we now have about sixteen hundred. So, yeah, it's it's working. the The system is producing the um, the extra the modules we need, and 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 I was able to spend lots of those modules in order to bump up the vulcanite production over here and get that massive boost that we saw earlier. There's an, one major thing that I've also noticed that I still need to fix on here, and that is these train jams, which are extremely frustrating. Um, it's because I, I wasn't really expecting to have this many trains running, and now I, I have, and therefore everything is broken. So one of the things I need to do is go around and, and replace some of these, is, is put in some more chain signals, that'll, that'll help with these junctions, but it won't help with all of the trains that are trying to get into here, that's just caught, that are causing all kinds of problems. So what I really, really need to do is redesign the railway system around here so that the trains have somewhere to wait, possibly put in a stacker up here, which is a little bit silly, but would help, would certainly help. Um, or alternatively, have a feed that comes in along, I don't know, because the problem is we've got two stations down here. Maybe I should put the oil drop-off station somewhere else and have multiple um, multiple core, core chunk drop stations. I don't know. I need to do something about this because this is horrible and, as you can see, jams up very, very easily. Um, yeah, we shall, we shall see. I will have to mess around with things and try, try, try and fix that up somehow. I've increased the amount of sulfur that's being produced. That was rather easy. I just came along and dropped speed modules and everything. So now we have oodles of petroleum gas and plenty of sulfur for the vulcanite uh, enrichment. So that's good. We've got the uh, core mining running quite nicely in, in general, as I say. Uh, I've put in a couple of extra core mines. And thanks to uh, demand from um, from chat, should we say. Yes, let, let, let's blame them for this. Uh, one of the one of the bits of rail I put in is a bit a little bit weird, as you can see here. 
So I made an, a bit of an offhand joke um, uh, earlier uh, that it would be quite that maybe we should that it was because it's so much quicker for bots to place um, curved rail down that is straight rail because each piece is equivalent to about four pieces of rail. Tristan made me a blueprint that well looks like this and is an absolute nonsense. So uh, well done there. <laughs> um, so so um, because he'd made it, I was sort of I then felt I should probably use it. So we, we we've come along here along this um, this helter skelter ride. Uh, it's a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, it's also a bit of a nonsense. Let's not stop at the temporary stop. We don't need to stop there. Um, but the idea amused me, so I thought, yeah, let's put it in there. Now because unlike in uh, for example Open Transport Tycoon. I don't think the trains are significantly affected by uh, speed-wise by going around corners. So I think this is probably going to be nearly as fast as a straight line would be. Uh, not quite as fast, but not not too far off. So I think it's fairly harmless, but it is also quite quite ridiculous. So um, yes, I apologise for this because it is, as I say, ridiculous. Another thing I should probably briefly mention, although I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to explain this, was that I had some, some problems with the nuclear power plant, should we say. Um, basically down to it not producing, uh, it wasn't producing enough power. And this was down to the, the water levels in ba being imbalanced because of the way I sort of cobbled it together from uh, an approximation of Mark's original design. So the idea is that these two tanks should pass the water back and forth between them. So the water comes out of here, goes through the heat exchangers where it gets turned into steam and put up into the steam tank. Then the steam goes through the uh, condensing turbines where it gets turned back into water and electricity and then gets put back into the water tank. So as long as there's no more than 200,000 water in the system, it doesn't matter which side it's on, it can just get passed back and forth. Additionally, the condenser turbines lose a bit of the water each time when, as they generate power. I believe they... Um, they, I think there's something like 95%, they return something like 95% of the water but for, and only give you 75% of the power, something like that. And because there's a shortage of water on this planet, that's actually quite useful. So down here we have an additional, we have a system here with these pumps where they will refill the, um, the water tank when there's less than, uh, somewhere, somewhere, around, somewhere around here, there is a system that will pump more water in when there's less than um, 25,000 in here. I think it might be up at the top actually. Yes, here we go. The uh, this pump here will push more water into the system whenever this whenever there's less than 25,000 on this green cable, uh, which is monitoring the amount of water in the water tank down here. So in theory, this will always be kept at a sensible amount, um, and, and, and it should work. Now the problem I had was that down here I was passing water through from from the bottom of this uh, heat exchanger through into into this heat exchanger down here, and that and I wasn't measuring the water carefully enough, and that would meant I was overloading. The, I overloaded the system. We got more than two hundred thousand in total in between these two, and if you look at this, this, this has already got one hundred and forty in there and another one hundred and twenty in there. So I had to put in an, ex, an additional tank in order to keep this working. So at the moment we're just trying to gradually bleed through the excess water in these tanks until we get back to a, a sensible amount and the system can start working again. Um, but uh, so that, that was sort of the temporary fix to get things going. But I've instead, I've now, I've now also run this pipe out round here and through this duct down to... Are we actually measuring this properly? Somewhere along here. Oh yeah, yeah, this pump. Oh, this pump only runs when there's less than 25,000 water in these tanks. And so that will keep the system balanced and allow it to have the right amount of water in there and hopefully then then it should just work TM and we won't have the same sort of problems we were, we were having during the episode where basically the water tank filled up completely and that meant these turbines stopped working because they couldn't push the uh, con condensed water back out and so the uh, and so the, therefore they clogged up with steam and I just, we, I just wasn't getting any power from half of the power plant. Now as you can see they're all running quite happily. One slight downside that we have at the moment it, with this system, it, and this is something I want to fix in the next um, in the next stream, is that we're only running we're, we're running the uh, the um, it in, essentially in two completely separate halves. So we've got these two reactors running at the moment. Okay, they've just run out of fuel, but they were running. These two weren't, and they won't run until we until we start to get a bit low on steam. And the idea of this is that it means that if you're not using the full power that's generated by the um, by the reactors, then sometimes they turn off and allow um, so you don't waste the nuclear fuel. 
the problem is that uh, reactors get a bit of a bonus from any adjacent reactors that are actually working. So at the moment these have a 0% neighbour bonus, you can see that over there on the right. But if these two top ones kick in, uh, or the bottom ones kick in, then they'll get a neighbour bonus from the one next to them. So they'll get an extra 25% increase in the amount of power they can output. And if the other two next to them are going as well, then they can get a plus 50%, so you get an extra 50% power free. Uh, the problem is you need all four of you need them to run in sync in order for that to work. So what I'm going to need to do is have a, is is basically have have these two things linked and watch the uh, amount of steam in both tanks and turn all of them on at the same time and maybe ha also have an additional pipe running from one steam tank to the set of steam tanks to the other set of steam tanks in order to try and keep them balanced. So this is going to be a bit of extra hassle and a bit of extra faff in order to try and get these the the the, uh, the reactors all to run in sync with each other. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to see what we can do, what we can do about that. Um, it's a, it's a little bit of a concern, but we'll, uh, we'll we'll I'm sure we'll get it working at some point, and then this, and, um, and 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 allow and, and allow us to get the extra fifty percent or the extra twenty five percent boost. So I mean, I, I think that's I think that's worth a little bit of a faff. I also noticed that we're not getting through the dead nuclear fuel cells quite as quickly as I would like. Now I don't think that's a problem. It's just because we've filled up on the um, on 20 uh, uranium 238 here. So I think as soon as we need to build some more uranium fuel cells, there will, as, as you see there, we've now managed to dump basically all of them straight back out again, um, and that's now able to bring. It. Although we are still feeding some more across here. Mm. I don't know. Well, I'll have to I'll have to keep an eye on this because whilst this does seem to manage to empty itself nice and quickly. Um, it's also building up. It, it, there's also still quite a lot of them on the, on the side here, so I'm a little bit concerned that the uh, that we're not getting through that we're not getting through it as fast as I would like. That said, doing the maths, each time this run, each time this this empties itself, and then because as you can see, it has managed to empty itself, so it can now pull in and run four times in, in order to produce the 20 that was backed up in here before, um, and then this and then, and it will be able to run each time this this system runs. Uh, which should be whenever we've used up two fuel cells. So I think it should be okay, but we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes. Uh, next thing to talk about, and I think this may well be getting pretty close to the end of things things for this episode, <laughs> is um, over here. We, the, 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 uh, I, I talked about the steel system over here uh, in the last episode, where we're now bringing it, where we're now we, we're bringing in the excess steel from the uh, from from the core, the normal the vanilla core chunk processing. Um, the excess is now flowing out here and going down to be made into the, into the nuclear fuel. And as you can see, this belt has now filled up basically all the way along. So that's a nice big backlog of steel along there. And it's done that because I prioritised it. And also, I flipped the these long inserters here over to not be taking the steel off this belt anymore. So we are still using the steel in order to use the um, in order to make low density structures because that's a way to, to use up the uh, copper that comes through. Uh, but the steel is now, uh, but some of the steel is now being allowed to just flow straight through here and come down this way, as I was talking about before. Now, now this is basically filled up. That's going to mean we're going to have a bit of steel coming around this way, and that's going to allow us to make barrels, which we can then fill with the excess pyroflux that comes out of this uh, core, core fragment processing up here, and we're keeping this this uh, where in this uh, st storage tank, which is getting a bit full. This is getting got up to 120. It was at 140 during the stream, so I think things have improved. We've started to ship some of it out. Um, we are now so there is now yeah there we go. There's some steel coming around here. It's being made into barrels. The barrels are passed over here, filled up with pyroflux. That's passed over into this. We've got six barrels of it in here. We need to have uh, ten come, to come through, and then we'll be ready to shoot some off at uh, back over to Norvis in order to, where again pyroflux is required in extremely large quantities. So it's a never-ending sink. We can just keep firing it off of there. Like that. And speaking of the nuclear stuff, I've also tapped off the uh, the stone that comes round from the uh, from the reprocessing of the of the nuclear fuel cells to go up here and be just go into the same stone system as absolutely everything else, which is eventually just going to get shipped off to either Tristan or to Norvis, depending on what demand is like, uh, as, as glass or as sand. So we're getting rid of plenty of that. The tritium I am still stockpiling because we've got a whole. Um, seven of it so far so it's not too much of a worry we're not making that much but at some point we are going to want to start doing something useful with that finally i would still quite like to do a little bit more fiddling with some of with the prioritization of the vulcanite over here um we, it doesn't seem to be a problem at the rate we're producing it at the moment. Both Talos and um, Kothar seem to be satisfied. But at some point in the future, I could see that potentially being a bit of an issue. So I would like to come along and put in more... You basically use more splitters with the priority set on them. And then use loaders like this. So that all of the all of the, uh, the Vulcanite will flow into Kothar first. 
And then if there's any left over, we can ship it off to uh, Njord and to Talos with the, with the other two cannons. So the Kothar has to be the priority, I think, for this. Uh, and I think that's everything I have to talk, tell you, talk to you about today. So there's been the big thrust of the last uh, the last stream for me was getting the, the Vulcanite processing up to, well, almost ten times the amount we had before, which I think is a, quite an achievement. And a lot of that was down to putting in lots of modules. There's a little, perhaps a little bit of tweaking left to be done, but mostly this is, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this is working. We're getting, we're getting more Vulcanite through than we know what to do with at the moment. <clears throat> so I think eventually we're going to have everything sat suitably satisfied. So uh, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That really helps. It helps me. It helps out with uh, with growing it and making things better and allowing me to put, devote more and more and more of my time to these Factorio videos. Uh, keep an eye out for other stuff that's available on the channel. So um, there's often. Let's see what, what on earth is going on at the moment. So there'll be a, there'll be a stream on Monday when we should be carrying on with this. There will be a stream on Wednesday when I should be playing some more um, XCOM. That's going really well at the moment. I, I think I've. Uh, I feel like I'm uh, managing to kill off far more aliens than I'm losing soldiers so things are going quite well there come along and have a soldier named after you and uh, cheer them on and lament and, and drink when they die um, there should be videos coming out on Thursdays for uh, for GTA and Tuesdays there'll be some little bits of it there's factory videos coming out um, every so often then of course there's these videos on Fridays and Saturdays as you're well familiar with by now and I hope you're enjoying them so, as, as ever, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Please check out the sponsor, treefall.be, who will host a Factorio server for you, or a Minecraft server, or a handful of other things. If you use the code LAWRENCEPLAYS on checkout, they'll give you 20% off your first month as well. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.